G'day everyone, another beautiful day here in Melbourne. I uh, love springtime, it's one of my favourite times of the year. Um, just thought I'd pop in for a quick Q&A. Um, also I want to discuss a, a new web uh, Photoshop page that I've set up for you guys because now that I'm, I'm almost on 6,000 subscribers now or people follow me on YouTube and I keep getting people talking about behind the scenes and also looking at um, retouched against unretouched images. Uh, areas that we I can critique other people's work and I've set up a page especially for that um, which I'm going to show you in a minute and I'll, I'll show you what the actual page is and how you can get access to actually getting on onto that page as well. Um, it is going to be restricted for people that are photographers or videographers uh, because I don't want people getting in there that aren't related to the industry or you know or are not following um, all of us together as, as a group um, so I wanted to make this page specifically for you guys where I can show a little bit more of my work um, and also uh, you can share yours and I can do critiques of your images and things like that and it's a great place I thought that we could just expand uh, what we're doing on YouTube and once again it's all going to be free uh, I'm not charging anything extra or, or charging to get onto that site it's just going to be for you guys giving something back uh, for following me just the way that I want to work for you guys um, so I'm hoping that you support it too. So if you are really interested in, in joining it, I'd love you to um, uh, to ask for permission to get in. Obviously, I will be checking all the profiles to make sure that you are, you know, related in the photographic industry or, or in videography. Um, but we'll look at it there and let me know what you think about that. So I'm just going to say hi because we'll just have a chat in here. Now, it is late today, so I don't know how many we're going to get on this live chat. But uh, you can watch a lot of this later um, and obviously I'll leave this up with the links down below because I will put the links down below. Hi Richard, how are you mate? Um, because I will actually leave the link down below to the Facebook page so that you can get access to that and I've already put a couple of things in there already. I did a shoot uh, on uh, last weekend uh, with the A1 and I've already put a behind the scenes shot of that of a retouched as against an unretouched image and, and it'll be where uh, I'm going to constantly be doing this so you'll see all the behind the scenes part of the shoots uh, that I do. So it's going to be a great learning thing for you guys as well and you're also going to be able to see how I edit because you'll see the original images as against the unedited images uh, so you can see where I take it from and we can have discussions on that as well. Um, hi David, how are you? G'day Chad, how you going mate? Good to see a few people starting to pop in. Um, so like I said, please join us there. Uh, it'll be a great learning um, page for us all. And that's that's how I want this actual page to be, is an area where we can all grow together. Um, like I said, it will be vetted to stop anyone from being able to join uh, because I don't want advertising and things like that done in this page. It's just going to be for you guys uh, to learn from me and we can also learn from each other as well. And it'll be an area where you can share your work too and you know we can all discuss that there as well. I know there's a million pages like this out there, but... I'm trying to relate this more to what I'm showing you guys in YouTube um, as a, a person that's not being paid by anyone. Uh, also, you can sort of see how my retouching works. I'll have retouching behind the scenes there. Uh, I'll be showing bits and pieces like I'll probably upload to that page um, some retouching jobs that I do so you can go and see behind the scenes of, that I've already shot because I'm getting people asking about that all the time, uh, how we actually go about doing that. So what I'll do is I'll show you the page um, so let me flick over to here. Uh, let me just come down here. Um, so this is going to be the page that we're actually talking about. Um, so it's going to be, it's called the Photography and Videography Fusion School. Now I've tried to make this because you, as you know that I do shoot an awful lot of fusion which means I'm doing photography and video together and to be totally honest with you guys I really do think that this is the future. Um, so I'd love that's why I've called it that and, it, and I have put school down because I want it to be an area where we can all learn together um, because I'm actually thinking that uh, you know it, it's there's so much information out there but most of the time you get charged for this sort of information and, and like I said I'm not going to charge you guys to to come into this page uh, I want this all done for free I, I want this as a thank you for following me on YouTube and I just want it for a, a page where uh, you can actually um, get more information from me and like I said then we can all share together um, Chad said David are you happy with shooting portraits with the A9 compared to the A7R2 and I'll talk about that in a minute Chad I'll bring up um, some Q&A for you guys uh, in a few minutes let me just move this over to here just so I can get it out the way um, 
So that's the link and I'll leave the link down below. Like I said, this is gonna be a fairly quick one today because I just want to talk about that. Tomorrow I'll have the Sony Alpha rumors and news and I'll mention this again in that chat as well um, because I think that's a good place to sort of mention it too that we can discuss a few more things there and I'll obviously have the normal question and answer and, and rumors and everything else. Um, but if you, like I said, if you want to join it, that's the video uh, page that's there. I'll stick the link in down below uh, excuse me, so that you can access it. And like I said, I'll obviously be checking everyone that does want to join it uh, because it's important to me that you are from this industry and not just anyone outside that industry. I want to keep it very specific to you guys uh, that are following me on uh, on my YouTube channel. Um, Chad asked down here, he said, are you happy shooting portraits with the A9 compared to the A7R2? Um, yes, I am, Chad. Basically, um, the, th the thing with shooting the A9, it's the focus and the controls are so much easier than the A7R2 uh, for shooting that type of thing. Now, now I was hesitant. Hi, Hazan, how are you? Um, I was actually initially only using the A7R2 in my portraits because I, I like to shoot flash so much and my Pro Photo gear never worked with the, A7, uh, with the A9. That's just been addressed with the new Sony uh, firmware update. So now I can use all my pro photo gear and you'll start to see me shooting more with the, uh, the A9 now for, for high end flash type work. I did use it with the uh, pro photo A1 that I uh, had the other day and I'll be showing some samples of that. I'm actually gonna edit one today and probably post one later today, uh, a second part to that. The earlier one I did was with the, um, was with the Canon, but I might actually post one with the Sony um, in the next, well, it might be today or maybe tomorrow, I'm not sure. Um, but I have got lots that I've done with the Sony as well, so I will be doing that. Um, to be honest, once you've used the A9, it's very hard to go back to the A7R2 because the, the, the issue is it's the focusing particularly and just the way that camera works uh, is so much nicer to use than the, uh, than the A7R2. So the A9 is just incredible and it does it does really get you in and it's hard to go back. But having said that, if dynamic range is, is critical, if resolution is critical, I will still use my A7R2. In weddings, I'm still gonna be using my A7R2 to do the main portrait side of things. Because I have checked, and, and clearly the dynamic range is about a stop better in the A7R2. So I will still be using that uh, for my formal shots in things like weddings where they may go to a really big uh, poster size for their images to put on their wall. It's still better for that but I'll only be using it for those type of shots now. Nearly all my other shooting is gonna be with the A9. And to be honest, probably 90% of my wedding day is now gonna be shot with the A9. I will be doing some with the A6500 or the A6300. And in between that, I'll be doing some of the formal shots uh, with the A7R2. So that's probably uh, how I'll be using those, uh, the Sony cameras at this stage. Um, having used the Canon camera over the last uh, few days, I'm so thankful that I've now gone away from digital SLRs because honestly, going back to the system, uh, I didn't really enjoy it at all. The camera was fine. The results I got out of it were beautiful and you'll see that when I start to post some of the images. Uh, the results from it were uh, amazing, but it's just the, the way the whole system works. You know, you know I love the EVF now. I, I just love being able to go to the EVF to, to check exposure and things like that. Yes, you can do live view, but it's a pain to use. Plus, if it's bright conditions, you can't really see it very well. And it's just so much easier to hold it up to your eye and use the uh, viewfinder. So having looked at that now, uh, I'm, I'm so comfortable in the fact that I did get rid of my Nikon because this is the first time I've gone back to, to shooting a digital SLR uh, since I sold all my Nikon gear. So going back to it now is, is just, I just didn't enjoy it at all. And I'm so thankful now that I've moved over to mirrorless. Um, hi, Dave, how are you? Good to see you here. Um, David Johnson said, uh, let me just bring up these so you can see these questions. Uh, let me come up to here. So I've answered the one about um, am I happy with the A9 compared to the A7R2? And yes, I, I said I did. I, I actually said I wouldn't be, um, if I can, I've been using mostly the A9 now. Uh, like I said, if you can still get an A7R2 cheap though, it's still an amazing camera and I still wouldn't hesitate to buy that camera. 
Um, David Johnson said, David, what if I'm trying to join the industry, but I'm still learning? Can I still join the, the group? And yes, of course you can, David. Uh, the, the group that I'm setting up on Facebook is for people like you. Well, it's for everyone, but it, it, you, you have to be interested in the industry. And what you've got to be careful is you can get an awful lot of people that just want to come in and do spam and things like that. So I'll be checking the, you know, you know, what your profile basically before I add you in. So I've got it locked. So I have to approve it to let you in. Um, and I'm going to try and keep it that way uh, so that the people that come into the group are just from this industry and wanting to learn from the industry. So yes, David, you can actually uh, join the group and I'd love you to join because that, that's what it's for. It's for us all to learn together and it's just an area where I can expand. But I also want you to post. I have set up a stack of uh, rules in the group saying that you can post a, a certain number of images per day. There's no advertising, no selling, things like that. Um, but apart from that, I want you guys all to be in it. No nudes, obviously, because we can get banned uh, from Facebook. Um, so we'll have to be uh, sort of checked that way. But it's just an area where I can give you guys extra feedback. And, and you know, if you want to post photos and I'll have a look at them and I can comment about those too and everyone else can. We have to keep it um, constructive, obviously. But it is an area where we can all expand what I'm doing together with you. And I'm particularly excited about showing you more behind the scenes work of, like I said, my unedited work as against my edited work. And I normally never show the unedited as against the edited apart from on YouTube. So this is why it's locked in uh, because I want to basically, I'm very particular in what I show as against edited and unedited. So I want to make sure that you guys are seeing uh, really uh, interesting uh, good work, but I don't want people from outside to see that. So that's why I'm saying you have to have access. Uh, I've got to give you access to actually get into the group. Uh, that audio looks like it's hot on that picture. I'll just turn this down for a second. Um, so yeah, that's that's the way it is. So like I said, I'll put the link down below and you can uh, please get access. All you guys are definitely going to get in because you're already following me and you're the type of people that I want on this. It is for you guys that I'm actually doing this. Um, it's particular so I can offer you more for supporting me and that's the way that I want to run this Like I said, I'll be showing lots of more behind the scenes before and after type shots So you'll see how it's been edited You'll be able to compare the straight out of camera to against how it's been retouched and some of them times it's it's dramatic um, What I how I retouch you've got to remember that I come from a high-end retouching background So for me a lot of the images you will see how far they've been pulled away and sometimes they are substantial other times it's far less, but at least you'll be able to see that in there um, as compared to when you see the live behind the shoots on YouTube. So this will be more, uh, obviously, the still works that you can sort of see how it's done. And I will so sh show some editing and stuff like that. And it's an area where we can all communicate. Uh, and if you want questions answered quickly, you know, I should be able to answer them more quickly for you, things like that. Um, what else have we said here? Um... Delta Dave said, what are your impressions of the A9 skin tones versus the Canon 5D? Well, amazing, actually. Did you look at the video, Dave? Dave, because I put the video on uh, just recently um, showing that, and they were straight out of camera. So those images from the A9 were so close to what the Canon was giving. Um, and again, a lot of it's personal preference too. I mean, I had some people talking about Canon shooters, I think were talking about the blacks were better on the Canon. I honestly think that was basically rubbish. They were really almost identical together. Uh, and I, I honestly think now that, that Canon, if, if you hear anyone say that the Canon skin tones are better, they can't be talking about the A9 because clearly Sony have lifted their game drastically with the A9. And you're going to find that that color science is now going to be put into all of their newer cameras. Um, so I think what you're going to find is all the newer ones coming out are going to have that same color science and they're getting better and better and better. Um, so yeah, and, and I shot that in the standard profile, uh, well, on the Sony. It was on um, the portrait, I think, on the Canon. Um, but like I said, using the Canon sucked. I didn't like going back to it at all. Um, and it, it may be just that I'm not used to using the camera again, but I just didn't like the way that it operates. I mean, it's um, coming from a Nikon background and then going to Sony. I'm just so glad I went to mirrorless now. Um, what else? So yeah, so look at that, Dave. If you haven't looked at it, go back to that previous video because it is certainly worthwhile having a look at to see how close those skin tones were. And like I said, no longer an issue. Uh, it, it's, it's mute. Richard said, Dave Johnson, I'm in the same boat as you. No problem, Richard. You'll have no problem at all joining. Um, just just put in the, uh, just ask to join and I'll add you. 
Um, Altrick said, G'day, how are you, mate? Um, Delta Dave said, love the behind the scenes images. And that's the thing with this, Dave. Look, I, this is where I want to show all this sort of stuff to you guys. Because it's more it's more going to be just for professionals, or, or not professionals, but just for actual users to see this. There's, there's no way my clients are going to get access into here because they're not photographers. And I don't want them to see the before images. So like I said, this is just for you guys. Uh, that's why I'm going to be particular on who I let in. Uh, so you will have to come from a, a, a photographic background or you're trying to learn photography uh, because you will be seeing the raw images as against the finished images. Uh, and not many people offer that. Um, you'll always see these groups where they'll show the finished image, not the before images as against the retouched one. And I really want all of people that are, that are gonna join us to be doing the same things. Be showing some of your before and after images um, to, to show what they actually are. So, you know, it'd be really interesting to, to have that sort of really grow. So I'm really excited about it, actually. I'm looking forward to sharing it all with you guys. Um, Mourinho is here. G'day, mate, how are you? Um, Carl said, hello, people from the city that never sleeps. Carl, where's that? Is that New York? <laughs> Sure. Uh, let me know where that is. Altrick said awesome. Um, yeah, so like I said, people that are coming later on or have just joined us now or, or actually viewing this later on, I'm going to put up this page, which uh, is, I'll just let me move this down. Of course you can, Altrick. Yeah, just, just ask to join. Um, again, if, if we're looking at this page, I'll just show it to you. Uh, it's called Photography and Videography Fusion School. Uh, I'm put down school because it's an area where we're all going to learn together and it's an area where I want to teach you guys as much as I can. You can see here that I've already put in an image. Now you're not going to be able to see this much on um, YouTube because the compression doesn't allow it, but, you, but you'll see looking at this page on the left hand side is the retouch and the right hand side is the original and you'll be able to see um, how they actually look as compared to each other. And I'll put some more up today, actually. I will put some more in there today. Uh, you can see there that I have posted an original one and I've put down the, all of the camera settings that we used. Uh, and that's what I want everyone who posts on here to put their camera settings, just so that we know what was used for people. Um, and again, I'm gonna use this as a behind the scenes too. I'm gonna post this today, I think, where I'll show you how much this one's changed. And this had extensive retouching done. Uh, so you'll see this um, as against the original one uh, it's had major differences done. I shot it knowing what I was, I was going, knowing what I was going to do, uh, but again, it's it's going to have that to show a behind the scenes, and I'm going to post that one today, so you'll see that. Uh, and again, it's just linked to my uh, YouTube page where you'll see my other uh, work done. So there's a little bit in there already. Um, and like I said, I've had this set up for a while, but I've only just decided to really make it grow. And it's a thank you to you guys for following me. And I really want to give something extra back to you guys. So yeah, please join it. Um, I'd love you to come over and pop back, pop on board with me. Um, let me just bring this back over here. Just so I can bring these questions back. Where are we over this side? Um, what else have we got here? Um, Carl, you were going to tell me where the city that never sleeps. <laughs> and I said to Altric, yes, you can join. Carl Ryan said, yes, oh, New York. Okay, yep, okay, that, uh, now it makes sense. Uh, Justin said, how are you doing? Great, mate, how are you? Um, now, I've got a few people already asking if they can join. So, yeah, as soon as this finishes, uh, I'll start to go through and obviously look at your profile and get you involved. Um, now, with this group, please be involved. The main thing with this group is I do want you to be involved. Uh, no matter how much you're trying to learn, I won't allow anyone to slam anyone else's work because that's what not what this is about. This is for us all to learn together and it has to be constructive in the critiques that you give to people and things like that. I want it to be a, 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 a good learning place. It's not the place for you if you want to go in and slam other people's work. Uh, you know, or if, you, if you're just so stuck up and you're so up yourself, it's certainly not the place where you need to be because that's not what this is about. Um, I want this to be totally for, for people that are new and experienced like me to put their work and be able to show it off, discuss it, um, have people critique it, um, etc. Um, but, you know, I just want it to be a, a happy environmental place where everyone can really get on and, and learn. And like I said, particularly, I want to use it for something where I can give something back to you guys. 
Um, and that's the important thing for me, is to take it to another level where you can see what I've done to images and things like that uh, from a, a background scenario. It may also be sometimes I'll shoot some stuff on the iPhone that's behind the scenes. Uh, I will uh, potentially also go live just in this group um, and show different things as well. Uh, because I want things sometimes just to be for you guys that are following me through there. Um, so, and like I said, it doesn't, it's not costing you anything. It's a free site. Um, I'm not going to charge anyone for that. It's just a thank you for, for basically uh, following me. So do you have any last questions before we go? I, now, don't forget tomorrow is the Sony Alpha Rumors News um, coming up tomorrow. I'll probably do that uh, reasonably early, probably around about 9 or 10 o'clock my time. Um, so that'll be on tomorrow. Um, I'm looking forward to actually uh, giving you the normal news and rumors, etc. Um Stay tuned today because I will be doing some sort of a video and I'll have that on live uh, on YouTube later today sometimes. It'll be another uh, Profoto A1 shoot, I think, um, that I want to probably do. I may do a Sony one today. I'm not sure yet, but I will be showing another one of those um, coming up today. And obviously, I'll have the live shoot tomorrow. I will leave in the comment box down below um, the link to get into the Facebook um, page. So if you want to join us, just follow that link and ask for approval. Um, don't panic if I don't uh, allow it immediately. It might just be that I'm out doing something else. Um, but leave that link there. And obviously, if you're from this industry or involved in this industry, you're welcome to join us. And I really encourage that. So, you know, that'll be a great thing. Um, Peter said, I'm all in. Dave, that's good, Peter. I'm glad to see. Richard said, um, David, I love the new Profoto A1. However, it can't do TTL and HSS on the A6500. Um, I hope they do a firmware for it. I don't think they will. Richard, I, I think it's only going to be linked for newer cameras from now on. Um, I'm not sure it's, I think it's something to do with Sony because uh, the Air, the Profoto A1 never worked with the A9 until Sony did the firmware update. So I think it might be just something to do with that. Um, so I wouldn't count on having that released for the A6500, but it will work with all the A7 series cameras, and now it works with the A9, and I'm certain that it will probably it will work with the newer Sony cameras that come out as well, once the firmware have been updated. Um, it's a fantastic light, expensive, yes, but boy, it works well. Um, it's beautiful, I'm gonna buy it as soon as it's released, but it's not released for Sony until the start of next year, so I'll be hanging out for that uh, until it's actually released. Uh, Chad said, you think the 85G Master is worth the money compared to the Sony 85 or the Zeiss? Look, if if Boca or Boca is the most important thing to you in the world, uh, it's probably worth it. I wouldn't buy it though. I'm happy with my Battis and I'm also, I would be more than happy with the Sony 85 1.8. To be totally honest about the situation, I wouldn't buy the uh, G Master. I would, if, if you're limited on lenses, it's fine if you've got the money. If you're limited on lenses, I would get, say, the Sony 85, which is really cheap. What is it, 600 US or something? And then buy another lens as well. Get another really good lens as well. And that will be far better than, say, just spending all that money on the uh, G Master lens. Uh, obviously, it's going to be better, but is it worth that extra money is debatable. And that's what, you know, you have to consider uh, when you're shooting. I'm more than happy with my Battis, and I would be more than happy with the Sony 85 1.8. So if money's not an issue at all, at all, I would probably get the G Master. But then again, if you, if you want to be travel a bit lighter, you know, you want to be more run and gun and, and have as light a, a camera as possible, you can't go past the 85 1.8. I mean, I love my Battis, but I've already got the Battis. But I don't know if, if, if I was buying now, I probably wouldn't buy the Battis. I'd probably get the Sony 1.8. Um... Mariano said, Profoto A1 versus Godox Speedlight video. Yeah, I, like I said, I, I should try and get Godox one day and just do a comparison between the two. Um, I, I honestly think it, if you've got the money, you can't beat Profoto. Look, no matter what people say, Godox is fantastic for what it is, and it clearly does the, the you get the results that you're after. If you're dealing with something that is gonna last you for five years without probably having any issues at all, uh, Profoto is more the way to go. It's more for me that if you're dealing with on camera, I tested the Profoto A1. I was shooting with the Canon because it won't work on the Nikon at this stage, but I, I was shooting with the Canon Mark IV. And I'm not sure how many that shoots per minute. It might be nine, I can't remember, but it shoots a lot. I was shooting on full power on the fastest shutter speed 
uh, and it went bang, 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 and it kept up. I even checked it on my light meter here, and it had full power for every single shot. So if you're in a wedding situation or something like that where you need to work extremely fast, um, that is a, that's a game changer. Like, I shot with my Sony, I wanted to do a test, and I shot with the Sony um, flash on my Sony. I tried to do the same thing, and I got two flashes, and then it, it made me wait a couple of seconds to get another shot because it couldn't, it, the refresh recycle just wasn't fast enough. The, the Pro Photo will keep up with whatever camera you're using and it just goes bang, 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 bang and there's no difference in light quality at all. It's incredible. So once again, guys, you really do get what you pay for. And it's like that, I said before, if you're driving a Ferrari or you're driving a Ford, you'll still get to the destination at the same time as long as you're following the road rules. But clearly, one car is much better to drive. And that Pro Photo, the interface was incredible to use. It was beautiful. The fall off was amazing. I mean, like I said, you get what you pay for. Um, Richard said the 85 millimeter 1.8 is great. And it is, and I, like I said, I used that. I tested it in a camera shop and it was incredible. Almost identical to what the Zeiss Battis has. I think the Zeiss, and it has a bit more contrast and, and zap in the image, but it's so close it's not funny. Uh, the other thing too is the Battis is, is weather sealed and it also is stabilized. So if you're using it with the A6300, that can be an issue. Uh, so whereas the 85 1.8 is not stabilized and it's not weatherproof. So um, that, that can be a bit of an issue if you're shooting outdoors, but for the money, the 85 1.8 is incredible. Uh, recommendations on the 35 for the A uh, for this full frame definitely the 35 1.4 it's my favorite lens on the um, on the full frame uh, cameras with the 85 uh, if you're talking about a6500 uh, the 24 mil 1.8 which gives you the 35 millimeter equivalent Chad so they're the two that I'm recommending um, you use 35 1.4 on the Sony lens is, is amazing I love it you, you've got that beautiful aperture ring which is declicked uh, focus is incredible, uh, beautiful and sharp, and I love that 35mm focal length, so I'd definitely say that one. Um, David said, Chad uh, Silford, it depends on what you're looking at. Uh, 1.4, it's either Sony or Sigma with the adapter, anything else will be 2.8. I do have the 2.8 too, Chad. I've got the Sony 2.8, and that, that is an amazing lens as well, very, very sharp. I love that for travel or, or street photography, because it's so small, so light, um, but if, if I want to use more of a professional lens, like to get that beautiful depth of field and out of focus, uh, the 1.4 is the way to go. It's expensive, but it's certainly worth the money. And I don't want to go down the, the line of adapters and stuff like that because it does affect the focus, and that's, that's the issue with that. So personally, I would not be buying anything that has an adapter on it. I, I'd just be using the native uh, lenses, but that, that's just me. Uh, if you can't afford that, I'm not sure what the difference in price is between the... Sony and the Sigma, um, but but I can't say enough about how good the Sony is. And, and like I said, the wedding days for me, details, bride prep, um, all through the reception, the, the wedding ceremony itself is all shot with the 35 1.4. Uh, I adore that lens, and then I'll be doing more of the portraits than putting the 85 on, switching between them as the day goes on. Um, but that that 35 1.4 is is my main lens that I'll use for the day, so I can't you know, I can't say how much I love it. Um, what else have we got? That's about it, I think. Any last questions before we go, guys? Um, now, don't forget, please like the new Facebook group. Love to have you on board. Um, I'll stick that uh, on there as well. Uh, how about the A1 versus a Rotor Light? Okay, well I'll, let me talk about that, um, Jerry. I would not be using, this is me personal, and don't take this any other way. I've got the Neo Roto light, and I've tried it on camera for doing um, continuous light. It's too big. I, I hate that thing on my camera. I don't like it at all. It, it's cumbersome, it gets in the way, and it's way too big. And if you're trying to shoot and not stand out, like having this ridiculous big light stuck on the top of your camera, uh, the Neo is not the way to go. Uh, you need something like a traditional flash because it's much smaller, uh, much more powerful in dealing, like I said, with high-speed sync and things like that. Um, but I, I just can't... I, I do not want to be lugging around this massive light on, on top of my um, camera. Uh, I don't even know how good it is for the mounts on the, the camera either because when you're dealing with something like that with the four batteries in it, it's quite heavy, 
and it does it is quite heavy and to stick that on top of your camera and if you're trying to move it different ways and stuff you're putting an awful lot of weight on the top of your mount on your camera the the pro photo a1 particularly is, is incredibly light i mean really light uh, you don't even notice it's on there and having the round light too it's i think it's a much more um, natural fall off on the image and that's with any flash um, I may buy the Neo Rota light for some things, perhaps sometimes for off camera, but there's no way known I'll be using that on camera. I know Jason's using it an awful lot on camera and he, he seems to like it, but that's not for me. And like I said, I'm not paid by anyone and I'm just gonna tell you the truth as I see it. I, I think that that's way too big uh, to stick on a camera. And the, I, we have a saying in Australia that, you know, and we call it wanker. I think most people are gonna look at you like you're a wanker. If you're carrying around this massive, thing that's sitting on top of your camera it's it's just too big it's it's too much and i think guys you, you may love that aspect of it but once you start using it and you're sticking it on the camera i think you're going to get sick of that pretty quickly um i wouldn't be using it on camera no way no way at all um you need to have it and if you're going to use it use it off camera and i'm saying it might be fantastic and it probably is i use my neos all the time so i'm talking about um using a Neo off camera though, where I'm using it as uh, to just do a little bit of, of fill light and stuff like that um, to give fill. And as you know, I also love my ice lights as well. But um, the Neo Rotor light on camera, no. You may love it, don't try it first, but it's just not something I would wanna stick on my camera. And I found, I have found that to be honest, compared to some of the other cameras like the Nikon and the, and the uh, Canons, the uh, flash mounts are very strong. I'm not convinced that the Sony mounts are as strong as what they are on those cameras. And seriously, putting that much weight on top of your uh, camera is just crazy. And then I saw a thing the other day where they had a Godox uh, attachment on top of the camera and then on top of that they had the Neo. And it ends up being this thing that's like this to, to lug around and it's just, it, it's just crazy guys, don't, don't just, do it for the marketing alone, try it first. I mean, I'm not saying don't buy it, buy it, but use it off camera. Don't put it on top of your camera. Um, what else have we got? Um, Altrick said Godox is the beast, uh, and yeah, and I've heard nothing but good reports about it, um, that it is very, very good for what, what it is. Uh, like I said, I'm so into the Pro Photo, and got all the Pro Photo gear for me, it's, it's just important to to show that. And I have to be totally honest with you guys, I often say camera does not matter to me that much, but if I'm going to do a professional shoot, and I am hired to do professional shoots sometimes, more of the uh, higher end modeling type shoots, um, they all do use Profoto. And it's interesting that if you go in and, and you're using Profoto, they do have this thing about you looking like of a very professional photographer because it is always pro photo gear. That's what they're mostly always using is that type of lighting scenario. And I have heard things sometimes like the, the, the cheaper lights, you can have them malfunctioning or, or you know you can get some bits that can actually fall off because they're not so well made sometimes. And doing a professional shoot where they're paying big money, uh, I don't want those sort of issues happening while I'm on a shoot. Um, so for me, it's important to go into a shoot like that particularly where I've got gear that uh, I know I can count on that flash. Camera, I wouldn't give two hoots whether they say, oh, you're shooting Sony or whether you're shooting Canon or whatever, but the lighting does matter to me, uh, and that's an important thing as well. Um, what else have we got down here? Uh, Carl said the round light is a good idea. Yeah, and that's right, it is. It's very good because it, you don't have that issue of being square or, or rectangle when you turn it the opposite way where the light fall off's not so soft. Plus, you've got to remember too that that light has a freshness filter on the end of it, which makes it very soft. It's And I actually put it against the wall, the LED light, and had a look at it uh, as against my Sony flash that also has the LED lights. And it is a very, very soft light that's coming out of it, like incredibly soft actually. Um, what else have we got here? Uh, the Max Flash is the same as the Max LED. Why not use 100% LED? The Flash is a joke. Um, Keith Bailey said, uh, James Parrish, the two is Jason's love gimmick to pay the child that support. I'm not sure what that's talking about. I mean, Jason does seem to love that light and he does really good work with it, guys. So, I mean, I'm only saying from my aspect, um, it's not for me. 
I do not want to put that big, massive thing on top of my mirrorless camera because I want to. I want to travel with minimal gear. I don't want to be lugging around this massive light stuck on the top of my camera. It, it, it's just stupid for what I want to do, and it's not what I want to do. That's why something like the Sony flashes for me or the uh, Profoto A1 when I can get it uh, is so worth it. And to be totally honest, guys, initially I thought I would only buy that Profoto light when. Um, if you have Profoto, but now I would buy that light anyway. And it's $1,400 Australian. I'm gonna buy that out of my own money. No one's giving me that light. I'm gonna pay for that light. So that, that, will, that should tell you something. Uh, it was incredibly good on my camera. Like I said, recycling was insane. The battery is just so good, it's so light. Uh, the fall off is beautiful. The mag holders that fit on the top are just fantastic. Uh, it's super quiet. Uh, it, it's just, I can't wait to get it. Um, so any of you, if you've got the money, seriously, I would seriously think about it when the, when the Sony version comes out. Uh, what else have we got? Um, Copro said, was doing wildlife photography today and a buck stepped on me. Wow. <laughs> but that hurt, but scared the shit out of the, my, uh, buck. I'll show you these images, guys. What, look at these. I'm going to show you something, uh, just so you can see them. Uh, cause I went and did a shoot the other day. Um, I want to show you this cause uh, Australia is an amazing country. Um, I wish I, this is one shot where I actually wished that I had um, a, um, where are we? I wish that I had my A7R2 though, because I actually shot with um, the A9. Uh, here we go. All right, so let me switch over to here. Um, and I'm gonna scroll down here. And let me show you this image. Now, th this was just so cool because on this day, just after the shoot that I went down to uh, where I shot the other day, um, I had this happen. Now, the funny thing was I just immediately went and grabbed my camera. Now, there was a hundred of them. A lot of them had, had, had run off or hopped off. You can see there's one in midair right there, but there were, I reckon there was a hundred of them. So they were everywhere and it was incredible. So I just went to the uh, car and actually shot. Now I'm a long way away, because if you look at the original, you can sort of see here, let me just lighten this off a little bit. Um, I just shot this. I didn't even have time to set the camera or anything because I just wanted to get them before they all took off. Uh, let me see if it'll, if I can bring this up a little bit. You can sort of just all see them sitting around in the background through here, um, they were big. Some of these, some of these kangaroos were probably around over six foot tall. Um, they were incredibly large animals. Um, so yeah, so that happened the other day when I was actually driving home. Uh, when you're talking about that, it was interesting. I thought I'd I'd show you that. Uh, it was so cool. But yeah, I just I just grabbed the A9 out. It was shot with <laughs> a high ISO, sixteen. Uh, what is it? one sixteen hundredth of a second, I just grabbed it and shot it off. Now, if I had the A7R2, I would have been able to crop this in much larger and you would have been able to see all the details uh, in the um, in the actual kangaroos there. But yeah, it's such a cool. Um, let's have a look what else people are saying. Uh, Capro said, how's your day? How's yours, mate? Uh, he <laughs> said he's well hidden. That's funny that it stood on his foot. Um, Keith said, uh, but Flash does meter and Profoto gears is awesome. And, and I, like I said, I tested it on full power and every single one was uh, uh, so continuous in its light readings with the um, light meter. There was a review done online about it, but that review is flawed because they were shooting HSS and he was reading that with his light meter and the light meter he was using can't pick up HSS. So that, that actual uh, review is flawed. Um, what else have we again? Try renting Godox for a job sometime. And that's a problem, Dave, you can't. You, you can't. It's very hard to rent in most places, particularly, well, I think it's the same in America. If you go to most rental places, they will always stock Profoto, and that's one of the interesting things uh, about that. And it just works, that's the thing for me. Um, Carl said, Jason mostly uses it off camera and gets great results. And he does, Carl. Yep, you're right. And like I said, it seems to be really good for what he uses it. Um, I'm not sure, like I said, I may get one. Uh, I've got two of the Neos at the moment, um, but they're not the flash versions of them. And to be totally honest, I don't think I need the flash versions because I'm happy shooting the Neos uh, in continuous light 
uh, with my Sony cameras because I can pump up the ISO and you get what you see. So I'm, I'm actually quite comfortable shooting just with them um, like that. And to be honest, if I'm going to be using flash, I'd prefer to be using my flashes. But that, that's just the way that I'm shooting at the moment. Um, but yeah, Jason did. He was getting some great results. So, But like I said, it's just not for me. Uh, what else have we got? James said, why is it that Profoto is the only company that makes a round flash head unit? Uh, it makes it, it makes sense since it's round. I don't know, really. I don't know why no one else has done that because it does make sense. I think what they're saying too is, and I did read, I think Photo Joseph commented about it this morning, that if you're shooting wide, the edges of the image might have a little bit of um, venetting. I didn't notice that though. Uh, but I suppose there is a potential for that. But you could get that with a normal flash anyway, so I, I'm not certain. But I, I think the round flash is amazing, especially with that Freshnel, I think that's how you pronounce it, lens on the front, which softens that light up. Um, Neo 2 is excellent LED light. It's a flash that is questionable. Uh, yeah, and it's more powerful than, I suppose, in version 1. Um, but, yeah... Uh, who is Victoria? Keyword in Lightroom. Oh, that's, no, that's where I live, um, James. It's Victoria is the state that I live in here in, in Australia. It's Victoria. Uh, so it's like a state of Texas. Uh, it, that's basically what it, it, it sort of is related to for you guys uh, in the US. Um, they're building an army. I know they were. Like I said, there was. A, I reckon there was a hundred of those kangaroos. There were. There were so many of them. That the thing is, they're very skittish. The second they hear something, they'll jump off. And you can see, even though I'm a long way off, their hearing is incredible. Even though I'm a long way off, you can see them all looking at me. Like they're actually all staring right at me. Even though I was incredible, uh, you know, an incredible long way off. They're really uh, now it's noisy and stuff like that because this is a real big enlargement. Um, so don't take it on that. Like if I had my A7R2, unfortunately, that they would have still been so sharp. I was, I never took it for the day, and I, I was, yeah, I should have taken it. That's where the A7R2 will will excel in something like that type of a shot. But yeah, they're such beautiful animals. Um, where are we? Uh, Jerry said awesome. Delta Dave said notice that Jason shot the Neo on a very overcast day when the LEDs would have been effective. Um, and like I said, I can't really comment, Dave, on how powerful that light is because I haven't used it. And I'm not going to comment about how effective the LEDs are unless I actually shot it in real life myself. I'm just saying for me, it's not a solution that's going to work on camera because it's the same size as what my Neos now are, the current Neos. And there's no way I'm going to put those Neos on top of my camera. No way am I going to do that. It's way too big. There's no way it would replace a flash for me in that respect. It's just not workable. And and you would just look silly walking around with that thing on top of your camera. And if you're trying to move quick, I can guarantee the way I am, I'll knock it off. I'll hit something and it's going to bounce off and I'm going to damage the top of my camera. There's no way um, that I would be putting that on top of the camera. Off camera, it's probably fantastic. But again, if I'm going to take anything off camera, I'm just going to use flash. Um, but yeah. Or I'll be using my lights that I've got, which is the um, ice light or the Neos I've got now because I like to shoot them just in continuous light. Uh, I think the Neo 2 is, is twice as bright though, so that could be an advantage um, if, if you wanted to do that. The, the problem is with these lights, any continuous light is that it's so bright, you know, and that's the issue, I suppose. I suppose you can get over that if you're shooting the, the Neo uh, as a flash, um, but yeah. I'll, I'll leave a comment about it. Hopefully I'll get one one day and I'll be able to do a review. But like I said, there's no way I'm sticking it on top of my camera. No way. Um, are you married? Yes, I am. That was Kerry. My wife is the one that was in the uh, last video, Kai Pro. If you look at it, Kerry is my wife. She often assists me uh, in most of the shoots. Um, Kerry is the one holding the flash in the last shoot that I put up. Um, so that's, that's my wife. Love her to death. Um... James said, uh, funny, I'm from Houston, Texas. Wow, yeah, so the, it's Victoria uh, is the actual state name here. Altric said, I'm too invested in Godox. And there's nothing wrong with that, Altric. Don't, don't ever think that you need to move away from what you've already got. Um, it's really important that you stick with what you can afford. If you can't afford Pro Photo, no way would I move down that line until you can get enough work to justify what you're actually doing. And the first thing people will do is they'll always say Pro Photo is too expensive and stuff like that. And they always say that without using it. And you know, and the point is too, 
I want something that works for me and is reliable 100% of the time. If they're 100 meters away, I know it's gonna fire. Uh, but that's just for me. If, if you can only afford Godox and there's nothing wrong with it, it still works the same way, um, there's, I'd stick with Godox. Um, CH said, hi, how are you? Um, Dave, the S in, ah, oh, so it's Frenol, is it? Or Frenol, is it Frenol, is it? Frenol is silent, the S is silent. Try and, <laughs> try and do an American accent. Um, no. <laughs> uh, is my accent very strong? I can't, I mean, obviously I can't tell, but um, yeah, just let me know if my accent's very strong. I couldn't do an American accent. The only thing I can ever say is the New York, because I've been to New York a few times, and I love to say coffee, because I love going, um, in the morning I'll always say to my wife, it's time for a coffee, because that's the way they say coffee. Whereas we say coffee, um, they'll say coffee. And I've never forgotten that since I was over there. Um, so I'm always saying, let's go for a coffee. Um, that's about as good as my American accent uh, actually is. Uh, I use my friend's pro photo. That works well too. Yeah, and it does. That, that's the thing. It works amazingly well. All right, guys, I'm going to head off. Um, just let me see what... Oh, they just said laugh out loud. Um, I'll put the link down below to join me on Facebook. Please do that. Uh, like I said, cost you nothing to join, and obviously you're going to learn a lot with me. Uh, Carl said your accent is not very strong. Oh, there you go. Perhaps you're getting used to me, Carl. <laughs> oh, I love it. Fernell. Um, oh, Fernell. Oh, so it's Fernell, is it? Oh, there you go. Thanks, James, because I'm always wondered how you actually say it. Uh, we need a US meetup. I oh, know, Dave. And if I, when I come out, I will be coming out. I don't know whether it's next year or the year after. It may be next year. Um, we'll definitely do a US meetup, that's for sure. Um, living in America at the moment, so I can't pull off a decent accent now. <laughs> uh, all right, guys, I'm going to head off. I'll put the link down below so you can access the site. Um, yes, I've got the new group, James. Just a last reminder for everyone that's coming in really late. Um, please join my Facebook page. Uh, I've got it here so that you can see. Just let me bring this over. Um, it's over here. It's called Photography and Video Fusion School. It's for you guys. It's for me to give something back to you guys. It's got all the behind the scenes. It's going to have editing before and after so you can see how they've been taken. It'll have all extra information that I can't actually show on YouTube. Um, it is going to be specifically for photographers and videographers that are learning and also advanced. Uh, where you can share your work and I'll also be showing. Because I don't want this to be all about me. I want this to be your page as well. Um, so please join in there uh, as well. Like I said, I'll stick that in the link down below as soon as uh, this comes up. All right, guys, I'm going to go back to some editing. Um, I'll see you all tomorrow for the live Sony Rumours and News. Um, and obviously, I'll also... Um, Give this another plug to the, the, the site again tomorrow because I, I'm hoping that this really grows and we can all join stuff and, and grow together. Um, and it is, I'm treating it like a school where we can all learn off each other. All right, guys, well, have a, a fantastic day and I'll um, see you tomorrow for the next shoot. Bye for now.